For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Well, hello there again. It is the almost the end of August 2017. Been a wonderful, wonderful summer. Uh, the fall season brings us back to school and brings us to football at the East China Stadium. Lots of great things happening in the East China School District. Lots of good things happening in, uh, in the uh, um, Heritage Days, which is coming up September the 15th in downtown Marine City, right around that beautiful city hall. Tell us all about it. Judy White, Hi, welcome Paul. back. Thank you. And Becky Lepley, nice to see you. Nice Chaplain of the Marine City Police Department. Yes. Nice to see you both. Thank and you. Heritage Days, you probably have seen these kind of flyers around the, yeah. around the city, folks. Pick one up so that you know that there's what's happening, uh, sesquicentennial. 150th year, uh, building tours. People can have tours mm -hmm. of, the, of that wonderful old building. Yes. Uh, live performances, workshops, Civil War living history. What, tell me all about it, what's going on? Well, Heritage Days is really an opportunity not only to have fun and to draw people into Marine City, but also to educate them about the building, get them inside the building, uh, show them uh, some interesting views and some interesting uh, perspectives on the building. That structure dates to 1884. It was designed by George DeWitt Mason and Zachariah Rice. They were Detroit architects, but very young. Uh, Mason was probably 27 when he signed the contract to design that place. Let me stop you there and have uh, Crystal throw up those pictures that, that we talked about before okay. we went on the air yeah. of the building itself. And sure. The, yep, put your um, the, uh, the architectural style is Richardson Romanesque. Uh, Richardson from the architect H. H. Richardson, who uh, practiced in and around the city of Boston and uh, the state of Massachusetts. Uh, Richardson was very, very uh, in love with medieval architectural styles. Richardson chose the Romanesque, which is 800, 900, 1000. AD. Okay, let's, let's go to the beginning, the uh, very first picture, uh, uh, Crystal, which is of the, of the building itself. Let's start with those. There we go. Okay, uh, now yeah, we, there go, we go. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, Mason, who was the principal designer of the Mason and Rice uh, duo, um, was very, very influenced by Richardson and loved the Romanesque style. And the key to recognizing that is in this shot, two things, the round arches and down below, the very rough hewn stone mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, surrounds this left corner of the building and all along the facade of the structure. Uh, Romanesque style emphasizes a certain thickness and durability of design, uh, towers are a key feature. Okay, roll the next picture there, Crystal, okay. Yeah, so this is called rusticated stonework, where the face of the stone is left in very uh, rustic, very rough shape. And um, if we could go to the next, the next shot. Towers the tower, are a key yeah. feature, and so this is uh, what was in fact the hose drying yeah. tower. And to the left of that would have been the um, home of the fire department yep. at Marine City. Next one. Now it's a nice shot of the whole building. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so the, of course the second tower feature. This is something that um, Mason did a lot in his designs. Um, we could find that, for example, in uh, his designs for other city halls, per okay. perhaps in Canada. Mm -hmm. I to say to those those balconies. Remember, this building went up before air conditioning or, or heat, <laughs> and literally uh, people went outside to to cool off and, and get yeah. a breath of air. And that second floor, of course, is the um, opera house, and where they had balls and dances and so forth and so on. Oh, and right into the yeah. is that the uh, it's the cornerstone. Cornerstone and, uh, build. 
Yeah, and there is a time capsule, which has been filled uh, two years ago and put back in place. Mm. Okay, so that we've seen some beautiful, beautiful pictures. There's another one there of, of the building itself. Yeah. And does Heritage Days tie to, into the building? It absolutely does. Um, in, in fact, since the building is uh, end of the century, uh, for the first several years of Heritage Days, we focused on a Victorian style dress, and so we're in costume. Mm -hmm. But this year is the sesquicentennial. We've opened the parameters of that to say anything of the 150 years oh, okay. would be okay. Celebrating as, uh, it, all the different phases. Also, the three days, uh, the Friday evening when we open is basically a concert by the East China Community Band. Uh, and uh, then on Saturday, w the emphasis is really on children. There's all kinds of things for children to do that have nothing to do with electronics. I wouldn't tell them that ahead of time, but they'll have a ball with uh, uh, stilts and uh, uh, all kinds of different uh, things that uh, entertain children down through the ages. And then uh, Sunday, um, we're, we're having, starting off with the hymn sing, but the main focus on Sunday at four o'clock, we're going to have a, a special service uh, where we're gonna honor our first responders. Wonderful. Uh, and yeah. we're including in that the DPW. Oh, the right. Department of Public Works. They um, are the first responders for a water main break. Exactly. Or exactly. trees down. You are. That is great. Exactly. That is great. And so we're, although they said, what uniform should we wear? I said, we're going to get just some fancy suspenders. But <laughs> uh, our DPW, our police officers, our firefighters, and, and, our, and the support staff, the city staff, are all going to be honored. People don't realize that your first responders, 70-some percent of all uh, PTSD diagnoses are police officers. Uh, all the things you've been reading about in the paper, this person uh, got killed, this person had a tragedy. Uh, these people have to see it, touch it, yeah. handle it. And um, they're an amazing group. And it's an opportunity to say thank you mm -hmm. to them because they stand between us and having no heat, having no electricity, uh, having uh, to deal with, with people uh, that are up to no good. And what date? That's going to be Sunday? That's going to be the 17th on Sunday at 4 o'clock. And uh, it's not going to be a long service uh, because they choose to stand through it. So we're going to, but there will be uh, bagpipes and drums, and, and um, we're uh, going to have, uh, hopefully, having a, a very important keynote speaker, although we don't have that in writing yet. So we're going to kind of okay. hold off on that announcement. But uh, it, it, if weather permitting, it will be outside. Otherwise, it will be in, in the opera house. Are you going to have food and treats? And then? Yes, food sir. all the way through it, from Friday evening until we close down uh, Sunday at, at 6, 6.30. Uh, and that is uh, food on the move. Uh, a guy named Chuck Signori uh, brings his big food wagon in there and, and uh, uh, honors us with all kinds of good food, plus free popcorn and water. Free uh, 300 Broadway, that's mm -hmm. the address of Old City Hall, and uh, your group is the Friends of City Hall, We are right? Friends of yeah. City Hall. We are um, dedicating two signs in Becky's um, uh, ceremony that afternoon. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, we have put up some historical markers that were, you know, very carefully condensed history of the building uh, so that people, anybody passing by could, could read that. Uh, and also we have uh, started putting in pavers and the first go of that is, is uh, uh, going to be dedicated and we already have quite a few orders to, if you know anything about a paver project, you put your name on it and, or want to honor somebody, we've got quite a few in and if you want to put uh, uh, pavers in, there'll be forms there for you to do that. And also, actually the rededication of a historic street lamp that a guy oh. named Hubert Smith, uh, who was a historian yeah. of Marine City and the local area, and rescued this. It's a rather fancy, uh, uh, from, from before the turn of the century, street lamp, one of the first ones that would have been in Marine City. And it has been powder coated and redone and rewired, and they're in the process of getting an authentic globe to put in it. And it's going to be right there over the, uh, the paver project. And uh, so all those are going to be uh, dedicated on also. On the grounds of Old City mm -hmm. Hall? Yes. Yep. Oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. It's called Heritage Days. It starts September the 15th at 7, runs through Sunday night at 6. 
It's just a uh, great stuff. Is there a Facebook? There is a Facebook page. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Like the Friends of the City Hall on Facebook. Yes, absolutely. And we have a website, friendsofcityhall.com. Okay. Did we miss anything? If you have any so. questions, there's a phone number on there and then give uh, us a call. One moment. 765. Please. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I don't see it on here. 810 765 1296. If you okay. want to talk to a live person, <laughs> you could get the machine, though. Thanks for all you do. Thank for you, Marine sir. City. Thank you. And it's been a tough time thank for you, the police sir. department and the fire department. Yeah. And uh, we got them in our great, thoughts and Great, great bunch. Yeah. Great bunch. Okay. Yeah. Judith, always good to see you. Thank you, sir. Coming up next is a friend by the name, name of McDonald, and she's going to talk to us about the Blue Water Pregnancy Care Center. they got a run coming up that you can get involved in. We'll be right back. We're back with a friend, a friend from Port Huron at the Blue Water Pregnancy Care Center. Jennifer McDonald, welcome back to Focus. Nice Thank to you. see you. Great to see you. How's your summer been? Wonderful. Busy, busy? Love the summertime. It's Do refreshing. You? It's refreshing. Mm -hmm. You've got a, a big fundraiser coming up September the 9th, yeah. and uh, it's a chair 20th annual charitable walk. You haven't been there all 20 years. Not, not yet. <laughs> But we've been serving the community for 30. Have you really? Yes. So. How many exciting. years have you been at the old Arm Brewsters? Five years now. Five years? Mm -hmm. And your agency is a nonprofit mm -hmm. uh, agency supported by yourselves. You don't get support from no anybody No government else. funding. Uh, no foundation grants really to speak of. Uh, if we do, it's just a little tiny thing to, for a special project that we have. And, what do you do? What does the agency Blue Water Care Pregnancy, Care, pregnancy Center. Care Center do? Well, we have free pregnancy tests, free ultrasounds. We believe women and um, deserve love and support during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that they get that love and care information and somebody walk with them through that when they weren't really planning on being pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so, that happens. Mm -hmm. And we encourage the guys to come in also. We have men that will meet with them man to man. And then once she confirms her pregnancy through ultrasound, then she can take prenatal classes if she likes. Mm, very and good. And we have parenting education after the baby's born. How many uh, young ladies do you help in a, in a year? Brown oh, figure. about 800. 800? About 800 women, 160 some men, and that impacts about 500 babies. Marvelous, marvelous. So, and all of our services are free, and it's a medical clinic, so we keep everything confidential. So you do the ultrasound right there? Yes. Oh yep. my God. Sometimes then the same day. Do you share that information then with a doctor, with their doctors? Um, if she desires. Okay. We can forward that on to her. Um, but what we do initially is she'll get a picture of her baby mm -hmm. on the ultrasound. And it's amazing what happens at eight weeks. The baby at eight weeks is about the size of my thumb. Your thumb's a little bit bigger. You have right. probably a 12-week-old baby there. Oh, my God. And, but they're fully formed. So the heart's been beating for 21 days. And by eight weeks, they got all their organs, and they are actually moving around. It's a miracle, isn't it? It is. Even though we can't feel them that early. It takes to another eight weeks to get there. But... Yeah, it's pretty cool. You had a nice banquet that I had the opportunity to uh, be at this last spring. I'm so spring. glad you came. Well, thank you. Um, and you gave a nice speech. You got very emotional. You, <laughs> you, but, but you believe and you're passionate in what you do. Yeah. Well, we want women to know that they are cared for and we'll help them. Okay. So now, in order to get all that going and continue to make it going, you need money. We do, because so, it's a medical clinic and my nurse... Needs, needs, we need to pay our nurse, That's and right. she doesn't get even half of what she could out in the real world. You know, so but. you're going to have, this is one of the fundraisers you have, is, mm -hmm. the, is the charitable walk. Talk to me about where and when and how. And so our 20th annual Walk for Life is Saturday, September 9th, and it's always the second Saturday of September, so it makes it easy to oh, put it okay. on your calendar yeah. every single yeah. year. You don't even have to remember what date it is. Mm -hmm. It's always the second Saturday of September, and I love poetry and alliteration, so... Mm -hmm. That's all the S's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It is at Port Huron, uh, Pine Grove Port Park in mm -hmm. Port Huron. Beautiful and spot. so it's gorgeous, and we walk 
to the bridge and we walk back and really it's not even about walking it's about helping and giving mm -hmm. so some people can't walk that day they walk another day or another time another location and some people actually don't even really can't walk at all so if somebody really has um, difficulty they still can collect pledges and help moms and dads and babies that so way. it's not necessarily a 5k or anything along those mm -hmm. lines it's it's a nice leisurely walk mm -hmm. from Pine Grove Park to the Blue Water Bridge what a beautiful mm -hmm. route that and is. And if you want to run it you can run it if you want to skateboard it you can skateboard <laughs> it bring your strollers bring your dogs Oh, so it's a, it's a real real mm -hmm. family yeah. event. And we have free t-shirts for those people that will get $200 in pledges. So the goal is to have all the walkers go around to their friends, family, and neighbors, get pledges. And the cool thing is, is you don't have to collect any money. We'll send a reminder out. And then for those walkers that get $200 in pledges, we have a really nice t-shirt. We have a great men's t-shirt and a woman's t-shirt. So. Beautiful t-shirt wear so oh, okay. get something I want to wear too. That's right and if people need information then just you've got a great website which is called bluewaterbabies.org mm -hmm. I mean, that just it just covers it all for yep. you guys uh, bluewaterbabies.org and you'll have, probably have a registration form on that. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, there for uh, for the for the walk and it's Saturday September 9th starting at 9 in the morning mm -hmm. and it's a walk for the benefit of uh, Blue Water Pregnancy Care Center. And it never rains. Correct. So it might look like it. It might actually rain before or after, but it has never yeah. rained during our walk in the last Knock 12 wood years. And head, everything else. <laughs> okay, so after the walk, mm -hmm. what are the kinds of things you got coming up before? Uh, well, the, we the have. Um, well, for the for the walk, we have refreshments and T-shirts and um, lots of things going on that day, and then uh, events afterwards. We actually are going to start recruiting volunteers again. So we'll have a group training coming up in October. And then our annual dinner is in March of next year. Okay. And we have a great speaker all lined up. And Well, they had so. a great speaker last time, you. Well, this is a better speaker. Oh. I do okay, but <laughs> we, have a, we have a national speaker coming oh, really? in. And Wonderful. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, that will be good. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the date on that one? Um, That's all right. It's, it's in March. It's the first Tuesday in March. First Tuesday in March. Okay, <laughs> very good. Uh, Jennifer McDonald, uh, you do wonderful work. We're always pl pleasant or glad, glad to have you come in with your smile and the good messages that you have. Thank you. Good, good to be here. You. Good seeing you, dear. That's about it for uh, this edition of the Focus Program. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.